It's part two of our conversation with the great Michael Lomardian and former Chicago lead singer Jeff Coffey. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Well, it's not every day you get Jeff Coffey and Michael Omardian in the same room, but they have spent some time together recording a new version of the famous Bonnie Raitt hit, I Can't Make You Love Me. Michael's on keys, he's not producing this, but a huge contributor to this song. We're going to have links where you can hear the brand new single in the description of this video. Our conversation with Michael Omardian and Jeff Coffey. It was pretty cool when I found out that uh, Tristan Bowden was on the project. Everyone loves a good reunion when when past members of bands get back together because they want everyone to get along. And that's not always the case in rock and roll. It's, it's sad that some people feel it has to be that way. Right? Because, I mean, everyone, we're all people. Michael, let's just go back to what would you whisper in your own ear knowing what you know now? Because now you're, you're, you're a different guy now. You're in a different body now. Everything's changed. What would you tell him? I would have said, relax, enjoy this, because you're being given an opportunity that a lot of people don't get. And yeah, you have to have talent, but there's a lot of talented people that don't get this opportunity. So I would say relax and smile and have a good time here and don't take things so seriously. That's what I would have said. Yeah. At what age did you start doing that? I'm curious. What age did you think consciously you got that? Maybe 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it was, it was, it was the, Understanding that the record business had changed so much that there really wasn't a real straight ahead path to get where people wanted to get to go. And I had to realize that I was very fortunate to be in a path that made sense. There was one, two, three other steps. Now there are no steps. And so it would have been, to me, 10 years ago, I realized, you know, record business ain't the same. Yeah. And it's so much harder for people today. And so I should, like I said, I would have said, relax, man. And, and Jeff, about you, when, when you're, you're like me in the way that I, I'm older than you, but I, what he was doing in the 80s and 90s, especially for me, where I was paying attention, you know, I was one of those guys that if Michael O'Martin was on an album cover, I'd want, you know, as a producer or involved, I was curious about you. And not everyone does that, but I was. And I know you were, Jeff, as well. Um that business has changed an awful lot. What would you tell yourself going back then as you were getting into it? Yeah. Well, I think, uh, I think for me, my, mine is, is a slightly different story to where I, when I started getting into bands, I was really playing, um, you know, very much a supportive role. I was playing bass and singing back on harmonies and, uh, supporting the, the lead singer. And, and I, I learned so much, uh, I think for me, I would have whispered in my ear at a younger age, go for your thing, go for your own thing, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. that is the big thing that I would have done early on differently, you know? Uh, but I didn't, you know, I was in bands and I was, we, were, we were a team and, you know, uh, a lot of times following uh, the, the path of someone else's creativity, you know, uh, that's what I would have done differently at a younger age followed my own path sooner. Do you think that that, that might have been a function of where you were uh, as far as in Florida, near Orlando or something like that, and, and the vibe? Yeah, I think it, maybe something has to do with the environment, like the, L.A. being the recording capital, whereas where he was raised, it would probably be more uh, common that you would end up in a band either playing someone else's material mm -hmm. or supporting somebody else because of just where you are. Yeah. And I think that if Jeff were to be placed into New York, L.A., Nashville, it might have been very different the way you viewed those early years than you do. I'm just, that's just an observation. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, because I almost, when I when I graduated from high school, I, I, I went to college. I played trombone. I had a music scholarship. But then <clears throat> when, I, when I dropped out of college to pursue music, <laughs> I, had I made the move to L.A., because I, I uh, had always envisioned myself doing that, it would have been a different yeah, story, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what I think. Because we were in, in that scene where we were, there was an, there was an A circuit, uh, a rock circuit. And so you play all the big rock clubs from here to Kalamazoo, Michigan. But you got to play a bunch of covers, and then you can slide in your stuff, and nobody cares anyway. So it would have been a completely different scene. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know what Remember? I think a, a good scene would have been? I'm sorry, Michael. I have to interrupt you. I, I'm just imagining Michael Omardian 
producing a young Jeff Coffey in the early 80s. Now, there's a picture. Exactly. That would have been cool. And that would have been a very natural artist that I would have been attracted to. I mean, I would have, I would have gone, that's the kind of guy that I want to produce. Yeah. Great book. And that's why it's good that you're both in the room now. That, that It's here now. Yes. But John and he, uh, John Pichotta and him are doing a great job. We'll have more from Michael Omardian and Jeff Coffey in a few days. Make sure you click on that bell notification, subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of our stuff. We'd appreciate that. In the next few months, we're looking forward to hopefully getting to 50,000. We're almost at 40,000 right now subscribers. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Street Music. Thank <laughs> you.